Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to the video. I hope your day is going great. Mine's been awesome so far. Another spectacular day in the Overwatch League. This one was filled with absolute upsets, crazy games. We started off with the London Spitfire versus Washington Justice. For a second there, it looked like Washington Justice was going to win, but at the end of the day, my prediction did prevail. I said that London Spitfire would come out on top 3-2 in a thriller last night, and that's exactly what happened. But moving into our second matchup, holy crap, I was so wrong. I said the Florida Mayhem were the worst team in the league and they were going to get rolled over by the Philadelphia Fusion. Well, that did not happen. We'll be breaking down both those games in this video. As well as that, we're covering the third game of the day, which was the Dallas Fuel and the Guangzhou Charge. Uh, what is going on with the Dallas Fuel? One second, they look awful. The next second, holy crap, they beat the Seoul Dynasty. They look good. They might have a future in the league. Next second, oh, we suck again. We're getting rolled over by the Guangzhou Charge. Like, they literally looked like an absolute mess. I was not happy with what they did on Anubis. Running effect again. I just, I don't get it. We're going to talk a lot about the Dallas Fuel. I always have a ton to say about them, and we'll do that in this video. If you guys are excited, do me a quick favor. Go down below in the description. Join the giveaway, guys. I am giving away over 300 plus Overwatch League items, hats, jerseys, shirts, whatever it is. Enter the giveaway. It's super easy. I know some of you guys think, oh, it's hard and I'm not going to win. You could actually win something. There's so many items. All you have to do is click the link and subscribe to a YouTube channel and follow a Twitter. It's so easy. Don't miss out on this opportunity, guys. And now, without further ado, let's jump into the video and we'll start off with the Washington Justice vs. London Spitfire set because that was chaos. It was like a battle of who is worse and just we suck. London Spitfire, I know, I'm the biggest London Spitfire fan. I was so happy that they won the championship. I predicted them to do it in season one, and I predicted them to do it again in season two. But holy crap, they suck right now, and it hurts. And unfortunately, I feel like a lot of the problem is birdering. He just, he doesn't play a high level Zarya, and then when they put him on DPS, yeah, he could get some good shots here and there on Widowmaker, but it's not consistent enough. He'll pop off and get a 3k randomly, he did it a couple times on Busan, but for the overwhelming majority, he's just not doing much, whether it is on that Widowmaker or Zarya, which by the way, his Zarya is very weak. Once they brought Guard in, put him on Brigida, and let Prophet shine on that Zarya, you could really tell that London Spitfire started playing better. Even despite losing Nubani, it was a very close map, and London Spitfire were so much more improved, and then once we got into the third map, Horizon Lunar Colony, the fourth, Rialto, and then finally the fifth, Nepal, you could tell that the team was much more comfortable with profit on that Zarya rather than Bird Ring and then guard in there playing that Brigida. I don't know what it is with Bird Ring, but ever since like stage three and stage four of season one, he just fell off and he hasn't been the guy that we knew him to be during stage one of Overwatch League and prior to the Overwatch League. Honestly, I know London Spitfire won the championship, but I can't sit here and say it was because Bird Ring played great. Yeah, Bird Ring played his role and he did decent. He had some moments here and there, but overall it was Gesture, Fury, Bedos, and Prophet. They carried the team and Bird Ring was kind of there just doing his job, which was good. But right now we need more than just doing your job from Bird Ring. And that's why he was benched out for guard and Prophet got his chance to shine on the Zarya. And of course, the God himself, which I am so high on, always have been high on Prophet. He can play anything at the highest level. It's nuts. I've never seen Prophet play something and not do amazing on it. It's ridiculous. The guy is so good. And I do believe now that London Spitfire finally got the first win, they can start to practice with this comp and this specific roster. And I think they will become a better team. Specifically, they just work on their monkey goats. They're not very good with the Reinhardt Goats, but their Monkey Goats works a lot, so work on that, and I think London could improve, but just keep Bird Ring out of there for now. I, I don't know. He's a great hit scan, and if a hit scan meta comes back, I could see Bird Ring shining once again, but right now, it's not his time. But yeah, overall, the first two maps went in favor of the Washington Justice. New Bonnie was very close. The first map, Busan, was meh. It just doesn't seem like London Spitfire is very comfortable running any comp right now. It's so sloppy all over the place. But again, once they did make those changes, they picked up her in Lunar Colony, Rialto in the last map, Nepal, which I already covered. It was somewhat close, but London did look like the better team near the end there, even though there was some signs of life from Washington Justice, and I did say this going into Season 2, that Washington Justice aren't that bad of a team, it's just that their schedule is absolutely insane. New York Excelsior, London Spitfire, Philadelphia Fusion, Seoul Dynasty, San Francisco Shock, LA Gladiators, like, they're getting thrown the kitchen sink in this first stage, and it's going to be really hard for them to overcome, and that's why they're setting out 
at 0-3 right now despite being a decent team. I haven't talked about them much here, it's been more about the Ludd and Spitfire since they did come out on top of this match, but Washington Justice, they look good. I like the pieces of their team. Surprisingly, Fozix and Hainu look really good, and it's hard to tell when a main support's doing good, but they're like all over the map, booping people left and right, and just staying alive, surviving, keeping people up, amping it, and speeding at really good times. I like their main supports. Sam Sam, also, a guy nobody knew of going into the league, he looks pretty good on off tank, better than a lot of other players we've seen, and he's on a team that's 0-3 right now. So I do like the Washington Justice, and I wouldn't be surprised if they make a good push in like stage three or four winning like maybe six or five of their seven games because remember they're getting all of the hard teams out of the way right now at the end of the season they're gonna have the easier schedule compared to some of these teams who are facing easier teams right now so we'll just have to wait and see one thing i will say is though i'm not that impressed with Corey so far a lot of people were hyping up Corey and saying he was going to be the best player on this team and if they had a chance at winning games it would be because of him but i just haven't seen it his zarya is pretty mediocre profit switched to zarya in the middle of the set and he just outshined him completely like tenfold and I I know Profit's like the greatest or one of the best players, but still, Corey's a little underwhelming. Anyways, let's move on now and let's talk about the second set because this one was just nuts. It was so close and entertaining. Unlike the first set, it was actually like good gameplay and I was taken away and shocked that the Florida Mayhem were able to put up this much of a fight. And I know, I know Philadelphia Fusion fans are going to say Boombox wasn't there. Boombox is a key part of this team. He's been playing good so far this season. I agree. Boombox has played pretty good so far this season. I was impressed with him compared to his stage four performance performance last season, so good for him. He was sick, and Elk came in, who doesn't really play Zenyatta, and I get it, I can see the excuses, they make sense, but still, Florida Mayhem, they outplayed the Philadelphia Fusion. Specifically on that final map, Route 66, you could just tell, they knew what they were doing, they wanted to accomplish a goal, and they accomplished it. Well, Philadelphia Fusion was kind of just out there making mistakes left and right, it wasn't just Elk. I know Elk died a few times first on Zenyatta, but he was getting picked off by great plays coming out from players like Zephyr, and BQB, who by the way, whoa, BQB is hella good. He played one season with X6 Gaming in Contender Season 1, and he won the championship, then got booted off for like boosting or something. He got in trouble. I don't remember exactly what happened, but he was signed over to Florida Mayhem, and this guy's a beast, man. I'm really high on BQB. Very impressed with him. If he keeps playing how he did, I can see this Florida Mayhem upsetting some other teams and actually making a push for the playoffs, because now that I think about it, they have talent. They really do, and if their coaches do step up, which by the way, they do have some Korean coaches now, I know I never covered it on my channel, it was like two days before the Overwatch League started, they officially did sign some Korean coaches, which is good for them. I, I don't know, I can see them going on a run, I'm excited with Florida Mayhem, they outplayed the Philadelphia Fusion, Nubani was very close, all the maps were close, man. It wasn't like Philly played bad. I know people are going to say Philadelphia's GOAT sucks because Jane said it. I disagree. I think their GOATs is fine. I think Sato's a really good main tank right now. He's even better than he was in Season 1. Obviously, Carpe, you can't knock that guy no matter what. He's insane. So overall, I just feel like it was a good performance coming out from the Florida Mayhem. So congratulations to them. I'm super happy that they got a win, and it was against the Philadelphia Fusion. And right now, this season's just looking like any team can win at any point, straight up. And before we get into the third set, again, real quick, guys, join the giveaway. I'm telling you, it's super easy. You do not want to miss out on this opportunity. You could actually win something and it's whatever you want. I have hats. I have jerseys, shirts for every single team. So trust me, click the link down below. It will take you like 20 seconds. You don't want to miss out. Anyways, let's move on. The Dallas Fuel versus the Guangzhou Charge. In the first week, Guangzhou Charge lost to the Chengdu Hunters. I predicted the Chengdu Hunters to come into the league and just lose every game. I thought they would be the worst team by far. And I was hyped on the Guangzhou Charge. Big time, man. Like I put them at rank 12, but I really wanted to put them in the top 10. I just couldn't, but I thought they were really good. As for the Dallas Fuel, I seen the same things going on with the team. They were making the same mistakes on social media, and it just seemed like overall they weren't focused on the game and ready to be in the Overwatch League. And that's what it looked like in San Francisco Shock. But then, out of nowhere, Seoul Dynasty, who beat the LA Gladiator. And by the way, LA Gladiators beat the San Francisco Shock, the team that rolled Dallas Fuel. Dallas Fuel somehow came out of nowhere and just did way better than Seoul Dynasty. I know, it's crazy. But now, all of the sudden, Guangzhou Charge, the team that lost to the team that I thought was going to be the worst, just 4 of the Dallas Fuel, and Dallas looked like an absolute joke. Like, this was their worst performance by far out of any team. It was worse than their loss against the San Francisco Shock. The decisions they were making were just not good. We started off on the first map, and by Shock, we had Effect in there as a starter, which I just didn't see happening. I don't know why Effect is in there playing over AKM on that 
Zarya, AKM has proved so far that he is the superior Zarya by far. I don't know why they would think Effect needs to start, but he did, and they lost the map. It wasn't very close. They did get the second round ticked up to 99%, but Guangzhou Charge came out on top. Then we moved on to the second map, Hollywood. They brought AKM in, which was good, and the map was looking pretty good overall. It seemed like they might be able to win it with their defense. They stopped the Guangzhou Charge at the end of the second point, and then Dallas Field went under the attack there on Hollywood, and they almost pushed it through. They had this very last fight where they were clearly ahead. They were up like two people. They had the ult advantage, and out of nowhere, they just let Rio, the main tank of Guangzhou Charge, kill like four of them, and it just made no sense. And then we moved on to the final map, sub out AKM again, bring back effect, why are we bringing back effect into start? Oh, because we want to run a Bastion, Mercy, Symmetra, weird comp when we're down 0-2, about to lose a set. What happened when London Spitfire was down 0-2? They stuck with their guns, they kept playing goats, they didn't try anything stupid or wild or crazy or wacky, but what did the Dallas Field do? They come in and do the dumbest strategy. You're down 0-2, play it safe. You can't just go do crazy things like that, especially considering the previous map was actually close. But no, let's sub out our best player and put in a guy who's been underperforming so far. And then to talk a little bit about Zachary, like, I, I don't know. I feel like the Dallas Feel need to try Mickey on Brigida at this point because he looked good on it in stage four. I know I've talked about Mickey not being able to adapt and get better at certain heroes and just getting capped at a certain point. But honestly, right now, I think they just need to change Zachary he's underperforming. He doesn't look like the guy they hyped him up to be. They needed a flex player. They got him and he's playing Brigida and he's not doing it very well. I think they need to give Mickey a chance. Overall, this set was just a disaster for them. They lost Route 66. They got 4 0 and that's pretty much it. I don't know. Not happy with the Dallas Fuel. The decisions they continue to make, even though they beat Soul Dynasty, just don't make sense. It's flashbacks from season one. I don't know what the coaches are doing. It seems like James focused too much on Twitter beef with Carpe and other teams. He, I, I don't know. He, is he really taking days off? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. It was an exciting day in the Overwatch League. I will cover the Seoul Dynasty and the Chengdu Hunters match tomorrow, but that is going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Join the giveaway, guys. Seriously, join the giveaway. It's so easy. You don't want to miss out. Get a free Overwatch League gear. I'm out of here, guys. Peace.